The game of billiards is urban cool, but it was actually in vogue back in the 15th century. Then players used a mace to strike the ball. When the mace's large head made it tough to shoot along the rail, players started using its slimmer tail end. This led to the invention of the cue stick, so players didn't have to worry about getting the right end of the stick. Pick a cue, but be selective, because choosing a stick that feels right for you pays off when you're behind the eight ball. To make the butt or bottom section of a cue, they start with a block of expensive bird's eye maple. The wood spins on a lathe. A donut-shaped blade moves on rails and cuts around the circumference, turning the block into a cylinder. As it cuts, the shavings are vacuumed away. Now a square-tipped steel cutter carves into one end of the wood. It makes a groove that will be used to attach the butt's forearm to its lower part. He slides a black plastic ring around the rim and glues it down. It's decorative, but it will also give the cue some stability. Next, he brushes glue on top of it to attach another ring. This one, made of a nickel-silver alloy. He screws the forearm into the lower part of the butt. Glue oozes out of the joint as the screw tightens. The forearm is now bonded to the lower part of the cue, making one butt piece. Then they employ a vertical CNC lathe. Computerized cutters move up on rails, precisely tapering each butt piece to the desired diameter. After that, another computerized tool called a CNC inlay cutter chisels geometric designs into the cue's forearm. The same type of cutter carves matching designs from ebony wood. A worker removes the ebony cutouts and inspects them. He handles them cautiously because the thin strips of wood are fragile and break easily. With a stick, he slathers a thick epoxy mixture into the cue stick's carved out design. The ingredients of this high-strength glue are a trade secret. Next, he presses one of the ebony cutouts into the glue-filled cavity. He fits a synthetic ivory cutout inside of the ebony one, pressing it down into the glue with big tweezers. He continues to build the design with another piece of ebony. These intricate inlays give the cue some attitude. A cue stick's good looks can affect a player's mindset and give him or her a competitive edge. This glue may look a bit messy now, but when it dries, the ample amounts will keep the inlay tight, preventing air and moisture from getting in and doing damage. He inserts little pieces of synthetic stone as a final touch, and then presses all the pieces down with a wooden dowel. Next, a computerized drill bores a hole into the exact center of the joint section. A second drilling makes a thread inside the hole. He screws a steel joint pin dappled with glue into the thread created by the drill, twisting it tightly with a special tool. When the joint is fully entrenched, he unscrews the tool. And now the butt can be screwed to the shaft for the game and then taken apart for transport. An automated paint gun sprays a clear varnish onto the cue sticks. A motorized stamping machine inks the logo onto the cue's butt piece. And a worker applies glue as the cue stick turns on a lathe. This is in preparation for the wrap. Then the turning cue pulls linen thread from a spool, wrapping itself at the lower section with the glue on it. This linen wrap will make the cue easier to grip and will absorb moisture. They roll the cue stick up against a high-speed cloth buffing wheel to give it a shine. Now these cue sticks are ready for some serious competition in the pool hall. So rack them up! <laughs>